Hi, my name is Emily Kinzer, and I have the TIG Grant Generation Z Buddy Benches. Working with me on this grant was Julie Ambergy and Joey Kinzer, and they are fellow special education teachers at the high school. So with this, we had our buddy benches, and the big idea with this was to build that school culture while also utilizing our transition portion as well. So with that, we really wanted to get them out of those digital screens. And so the idea was to utilize the skills that they're learning at vocational or the job skills that they already have from, you know, home and projects that they're interested in and things that they want to do on down the road once they graduate high school into this. Um, so with that, we also wanted these to be no tech zones and a place where kids can look for and see a friend and see someone they can just go sit down and have a conversation to and really encourage that face-to-face -face communication that a lot of times those kids are lacking at this point. Um, you know, in the digital age, it's really easy to get used to just texting or just emailing and not having to have a conversation face-to-face -face or voice-to-voice. -voice. Um, you know, a lot of times these kids, they don't want to make phone calls. They would much rather just text somebody. Um, so really trying to work on that and build what they already have going on with their vocational track or something that they're doing at home that they're interested in doing for a career. So our problem practice was utilizing digital portfolios, which also the digital portfolio component comes from a previous grant awarding that I received with um, allowing kids to build a report and build, not a report, but build a report for what they can do and not necessarily stuff that you can put on paper. Maybe it might be a video of someone in JROTC presenting the flag at a local basketball game or something that they're out there in the, in the community working, you know, having those conversations with other people. Maybe it's a local vendor that they work with or selling something or, you know, weaving a hill, things like that that they know how to do, but it's not necessarily something you get a certificate for. You can show through a GPA. Um, so really trying to create that cohesive awareness of what they can do and that they are employable and can take those skills farther. Um, so using those, show job experience and utilize online sources through the hauler, ILP, IXL certificates, and more. And also have empathetic lessons. And so our, the big question is, can we use all these things together with the implementation of the buddy benches to help guide them to develop skill sets that bring them transitional success? The big portion of IEPs at this level is really looking at after high school, what are we gonna do and what we need to do to get there? So with that, what can we do to build on that as well? And so we knew this was a problem because looking at our area, a lot of times kids, they either think, one, I have to leave to get a job, or two, I have to do you know, coal mining or something that they just can see through you know, what their fellow family are doing or community members and what the big you know, things are out there. And so with this, you know, there's so many jobs in our area that they can have. And it's just by allowing them to see those things and whether it's entrepreneurship or going to school or vocational track or just getting trainings and being able to show what they can do that is employable and our job opportunities. And at the same time, taking those things and creating that empathetic lesson and having them be able to show that empathy and listen to their peers and just grow those good job skills. Um, and so our, how we address the problem is the first thing is we worked on that empathetic training and really teaching our kids how to talk to their peers and how to listen and how to be good listeners. Because a lot of times, you know, we just talk, we talk, we talk, we talk. And being able to listen to your peers and see where they're coming from and have that different point of view is a huge thing. It's very, very important. And it's a good, it's a trainable skill and it's also a very good employable skill to have. You know, a lot of times, different job opportunities, they present different things that might go on and things that you have to, you know, be able to roll with and be able to learn from. And by having that skill, you're able to learn from it. Um, and then, so learning those empathetic values and how to be an empathetic listener. And then the second component was actually building the buddy benches. Um, and so with that, we util utilize our, our tra vocational school with their transitional services over there. And a lot of our guys and girls are in those classes and they were able to actually build these benches and be hands-on. And then with that also came painting the benches, you know, creating the design from the benches from the get-go. What did they want them to look like and what we needed to use and the materials and, you know, how many screws were we going to need and what type of tools we needed for it. And then the third group, the third component is the Cougar Cares group. And now this group is a group of students. We have matching t-shirts for that. One day a week, they wear them and they work these benches and they help make sure that they are a no-take zone and always have someone at these benches in between classes and breaks 
so that there is someone there to be a listener and to show that um, cohesiveness as a, as a school and be able to utilize those empathetic listening skills. So to evaluate ourselves, we really looked at the relation of these things into transitional services, seeing how we implement those, um, looking at job readiness, empathetic listening skills, empathetic knowledge, work skills utilized, problem solving skills, and communication abilities. So seeing that our kids can take all those things and show that they know how to do those is just a huge thing. And if they can take those and put those into that digital portfolio, that's something they're going to have for the rest of their life. And they can take that after high school and say, hey, look, I can do these things. It's not necessarily a certificate, you know, but it's something that I know how to do and I'm good at. And I've had this training. And that's huge for our kids. Um, what resources and personnel did we utilize? So we utilized local um, lumber shops and hardware stores to help get us those um, products and the things we needed to build our benches and create them to um, get all of our stuff. So we had lumber, hardware, tools, extension cords, um, metalwork, larger tools for the building processes, and the personalized personnel we use were special education teachers, regular education teachers, vocational teachers, outside vendors, and our students. And all these people are just so vital to this project as a whole. And it's just a huge portion of what we're doing and what we're trying to do for our kids. So here's our bench design. And so with this, you know, we went through a lot of models um, and working on them. So at this point, they're in construction. They're almost done with them. And we've kind of gotten held up with current events going on in our world. Um, and we're going to have half of them be stained and varnished because that is a more popular thing. And so if any of these kids are wanting to do woodwork beyond, you know, high school, that might be something they need to know how to do. And that's a very common thing to do. And it's a good skill to learn in general for any home, you know, things that they might want to do down the road. And then also we're going to have the other half be painted by the students and have that be led by them. And they have a lot of big ideas, seen a lot of very colorful things, um, some adventurous stuff. We have a lot of artists and they're very excited about that. So our t-shirt design is this one that's listed here and it's just something fun and it's something that they can use all the time. They can wear this to a ball game and then, you know, wearing it at the same time at school and they see these kids who are working the benches and they have our fellow students see the kids who are working the benches have these t-shirts on and that's just a big deal for them because they're like, oh, I know that kid, you know, I know them from working the benches and just having something that they can wear other places as well just to kind of create that community involvement. And so the outcomes are project yielded individually. We saw the kids, they progress with their student, um, their digital portfolios, displaying their individual skill sets. And so that's just really big for them to look at the things like, oh, I did this, I can put this on here now. Or I did that, I can do that. Or we're going to do this, so I know I can put that on there later. And then also um, just having um, the design space and having them be able to construct those, those units is just a big thing to be able to see the end goal that they've done. And then the school pro culture improving, you know, and not only the kids, but just seeing their interactions with each other and different different kids who you wouldn't normally see peg them together and having that school culture building and having them be a resource for other kids that they might not normally have gone to. And then also the teachers, you know, they were very invested in this and wanted to see how it worked. And, you know, those principals are very interested in seeing how this created, like, you know, those no tech zones, how did that work with the kids and just seeing how it took the culture of the school farther. And it was very, very rewarding to see. Um, and just see that, you know, school spirit rebuild and that rapport. So it's just a really wonderful thing. But we really had a lot of fun with this project and we hope to be able to see it further. And once we get back to school, I'm very excited to see the kids paint everything and just see how far they take it. But if you have any questions, here's our contact information. Um, we'll be back at the school soon and um, if you have any questions, here's our contact information. Just let me know if anybody has any questions, and thank you.